road she traveled. Honoring women who made a difference. A Kula Kids gift to our community. Welcome to a personal interview of Ruth Kiley, conducted in memory of Katherine Kaplan by Jacob on April 18, 2007. Tell me about Katherine's job. Uh, Catherine was a, a facilitator uh, through the school district. Uh, she had gone to uh, Washington, D.C. along with Borgild Olson, who was the principal at Jefferson School, and they instituted uh, the Right to Read program, and it was that at that point that I came in uh, to the language arts uh, English uh, reading program. I had been teaching music prior to that, but when kids couldn't read the second and third and fourth verses of songs, they uh, stumble along, uh, I decided I was teaching the wrong thing because reading is the heart of all learning. And unless you can read, you just can't succeed. And that was the premise on which Catherine Copland functioned. And so I think as a kind of a director of curriculum, uh, they were adopting a new series of reading books and getting uh, literature into the hands of those who didn't have it because there are lots of homes where there are no books, there are no magazines, there definitely isn't a newspaper because I used to give an assignment every once in a while and say, would you bring uh, something of interest out of the newspaper? And one boy told me one day, my dad doesn't take the newspaper. He wouldn't even wrap the garbage in that. And I said, well, no problem. I'll bring the newspaper for you and I'll let you scan my newspaper and you will have your assignment done. And of course he did, he laughed about it. Uh, but reading being what it is, the heart of all learning, Catherine Copland really took that to heart and wanted the district to succeed in providing an education right from kindergarten up through high school that would l let their students succeed. And I think La Crosse School District has really come through on that. Okay, um, were you two good friends? I was a good friend of Catherine's. We had mutual friends is what we really had. Uh, my friend Mildred Olson with her husband Bob uh, used to be, uh, once a week at least, we played br a contract bridge together. And uh, when I would see Catherine, she would always greet me, well, how's my friend Mildred Nelson married to Bob Olson who lives on Johnson Street? She said, you know, I'm very proud of my Norwegian heritage. <laughs> and so uh, that's true. We had mutual friends. Then their neighbors, uh, Stuart and Sandy Sletten, lived up the street from Catherine. And uh, Catherine, being a single woman, very often needed a man's uh, ability to tinker around and fix up little things without calling in some uh, big job to be done and so Stuart would go over and he kind of helped Catherine in many ways because uh, her widowed mother lived with her and uh, they were just a couple doors away from each other and so uh, the Sletten girls Pam and Vicki were good friends of Catherine and they loved her just like they would an auntie and uh, not having children of her own it made the difference you see you have to be loved in this world and she definitely was. Catherine was a vivacious, very energetic, calming influence. When you sat at a meeting, not everybody agrees on everything, but Catherine would somehow <laughs> wave her little magic wand and she was able to keep peace in the family and bring everybody together from divergent thinking. Um, how would you describe her life? Well, she lost a little brother in babyhood. He was just a little tyke when he died. So that made her very special in the eyes of her family. Her father was a photographer, and I have a um, picture in here that will show you Kaplan, the name on there, as from his Photoshop. Uh, her mother 
always uh, did lots of sewing and quilting and so forth, and they worked for Lutheran Hospital, they worked for Our Savior's Lutheran, uh, doing their sewing circle things, and uh, Catherine had a, a wonderful uh, family to be part of. Mm -hmm. um, was she religious? Yes. I have a confirmation picture of her uh, taken at Our Saviors, and we'll show that to you then, and you can have that as part of your background on Catherine. Yes. Okay. Um, did Catherine volunteer places? Yes, she did. And uh, I can't tell you all the places, but Norskid Island, with her Norwegian heritage, was one of them, of course. And yeah, she volunteered at her church all the time, too. So. Mm -hmm. um, um, like, how did she treat people that she knew? With great respect, everyone was treated very kindly. She just brought out the best in everybody. She didn't see the cup is half full, it was always full oh. and she was lovely. Do you know what her goal in life was? To do just exactly what she accomplished. Her goal was to succeed in education. She had gone down to uh, Richland Center and she taught down there. Then she came back to Roosevelt and at that point my friend Mildred Olson, uh, Mildred, she was Mildred Nelson then, <laughs> uh, taught together up there. And uh, then she w came to the board office uh, for the school district of La Crosse from Roosevelt. Um, so you said she had a brother, but he passed away. When yes. Was yes. Okay. Um, how was her relationship with her parents? Excellent. Yes. You can tell that it was a loving family. Mm -hmm. Yes. They wanted her to succeed and. They probably doted on her. I didn't know her at that point because we came to uh, La Crosse to teach as adults, my husband and I, and uh, we already had a one-year-old daughter at that point. And so I didn't know Catherine as a youngster. Yeah. Um, did she go to college? Oh, yes, out to the university here in town when it was the State Teachers College. And then she went on and finished her master's and so forth. I have some yearbooks that I'll share with you. Okay. Um, like, what degree did she get? Uh, uh, teaching in education. Okay. Elementary education was her in the education, K-12 then. Well, what do you think are some benefits of having a good education? Well, first of all, you should gain your own personal uh, goal and that being that you're accomplishing what you yourself, the inner self, wants to achieve for success. It adds to your earning power. It gives you professional status in your community. Uh, you are looked up to by your students. I still keep in contact with many of my students and they can be across the street and I will hear, hello, hello and come running over to greet me even at this many years after I have finished teaching. I've been retired since 1986 and this is already 2007 and when I meet them in stores or places I still get hugs from kids who would never have done that <laughs> as youngsters but they're happy to see me well. and I'm sure they were the same with Catherine. How long did Catherine teach? Or when did she retire? Uh, I don't, I, that will be in her uh, bio that's listed there. I brought that along with me. Okay. Um, was she actively involved in her community? Yes, she was. It, uh, however, you see, she had many uh, night meetings that she had to attend, school board meetings, all kinds of uh, curriculum meetings. So her time was pretty much taken by the school district. That was a, a total life involvement. Okay. Mm -hmm. But she did work out in the community as much as possible. She belonged to professional things. Um, in her community, are, uh, what does she do for, like, does she do a specific job every week or something? Her job was multitasking. Every day she did something different from hour to hour and Lou Ann Green was her terrific uh, secretary. 
and I remember this summer we wrote a uh, curriculum at the old Washburn School, which is now turned into an apartment building there, Washburn on the Park. We were in the third floor, it was 1980, hot, oh so hot, the windows wide open, and Catherine would come in and she'd say, I think you girls are working too hard. We were writing curriculum for the new middle schools. We had changed from K through six. The sixth graders went to the uh, junior high. It became a middle school of six, seven, eight. The ninth graders then went to high school, so they became ninth and tenth as junior varsity, and then uh, varsity at 11 and 12. And it was her job to keep this systematic growth of curriculum going. Um, so was like, we looked her up and it said her job was the uh, curriculum supervisor? She was. And when she came into a classroom, I'd hear a knock on the door every once in a while when she'd be in the building. She'd come to check out the rooms and the various places. And when I was reading specialist then up at Logan Middle School, I'd hear a knock on the door there and there'd be a smiling, gracious lady. And she was, the kids just loved her. They didn't even know her, some of them, very much, other than she was just such a pleasant person, and her approach to kids was very loving. Um, do you know why she chose to dedicate her life to children or to school? Well, I, I can't speak for her that way, uh, but I know that she must have found great reward. And when you do something to your own self-satisfaction, it's rewarding to you, it's rewarding to them, and I'm sure she felt a lot of personal growth. And so I'm happy that she chose that because she was the right person in the right place at the right time. Um, did you know her when you were growing up or how did she change? No, I didn't know her when I was growing up because I came here as an adult. I'm from Dubuque, Iowa. We taught several places before we came here. And so, no, I did not know her as a youth. I just have pictures of her. Okay. Um, how did she change, like, when you met her and you knew her? And I did see her failing health because she had osteoporosis and she uh, leaned forward. And it eventually caused her not to be able to uh, live out alone in the community. And she had to go into uh, Bethany Riverside. And so that was... Uh, a nice place to be. It's one of great respect. I played there with the DeCapo band. We'd do our band concert at Christmas, and I can remember going over. She'd been in the wheelchair and pushed in, and how pleased she was to be greeted. Um, like, do you have any favorite memories of Catherine? Uh, the summer we worked uh, for writing the curriculum for the content reading program. Uh, we met her on a daily basis and throughout the day, back and forth, and uh, we brought treats. None of us needed treats, but of course, to have coffee, you have to have a little treat to go with it. <laughs> so, and she was one to want to take her turn, too. Um, if you had a message to get across about Catherine, what would it be? To be diligent and believe in what you're doing, and that she did. She believed in education, and she was the epitome of striving for a goal and achieving it. Um, if you could describe Catherine with emotions, like what emotions would she be? She was sunshiny, happy, fun to meet, had little jokes to tell every once in a while, uh, just Pleasant, pleasant to be with. And you can't pay homage to anybody who is sour and surly and nasty, but she was always sunshiny and joyful to be with. Um, what skills helped you get like this far in life? My skills are attributed to the same ones that Catherine used I look at life from a happy viewpoint. 
I've been given some special talents and I share them with everyone. I'm still playing violin at this late age. I still play at the nursing homes. We sing and play and do a Versus Voices Violins program. We, uh, I played uh, French horn with the DeCapo band. We'll be playing out at Hillview, at the uh, nursing home out there on Saturday. The following week, we'll end up this concert uh, time with a concert over at the Crescent High School. I played yesterday at uh, Hillview. I'm a pianist and I accompanied the Learning and Retirement Chorus, the LIR singers. And um, I think that uh, just being active in a community means a lot. I do everything from mobile meals to you name it and I'm there. And I go up to Toma to serve the veterans up there at the Atoma Veterans Hospital. I'm on their executive board. I go Thursday to a meeting at Toma. So yes, it's just keeping busy. Don't let yourself get stagnate, in other words. What does a curriculum supervisor do? A curriculum supervisor supervises all the things. Uh, we have um, uh, strands of English, math, science, and social studies. That's the main core of your curriculum. As you well know, you're involved in all of it. And under English, you have the grammar, the spelling, and the literature. But now reading is a separate strand. Reading is something different. You have to learn to read, and then you read to learn, and then you transfer all of that learning into your various aspects of life. And consequently, it, uh, being the content area things, um, she had to supervise the adoption of the English, whatever books were used throughout the district, the math series, the science series, and the social studies. And you see FIAD and art and uh, other things have their own curriculums and are supervised by other people. Who do you think inspired her? I think she was uh, inspired by a, a loving family. Her father and mother uh, probably set a very good example for her. I only met her mother a couple of times when she was with Catherine. Uh, she was <laughs> told by Catherine not to go to the basement when Catherine was at work at the, down at the board office. So when we'd have a break from a meeting, Catherine had stepped to the phone and call and she'd say it's, it rang seven times, eight, nine, mother didn't follow directions, mother went to the basement and she was not to have done that in her age and condition, you see. They were, she was always afraid she would fall down the steps or something would happen to her and she'd be there alone without help. So Catherine was inspired by loving parents and then she in turn took care. Um, do you know like some of her role models that inspired her to be a teacher? <laughs> no, I don't know because that was prior to my coming into the situation. So, yeah. mm -hmm. um, uh, if you could describe Catherine's appearance. Like she was a, a very tall lady, much taller than I am, and she always dressed in dresses for years and years, even when some of us were wearing pantsuits. We at Logan Middle, weren't, uh, junior high, weren't allowed to wear pants, trousers uh, for ladies because our principal had said he wanted his women teachers to look like women <laughs> until we were out for winter bus duty and standing out there with the north winds blowing and then he finally <laughs> said I guess you know you could wear there but she was always dressed like a lady and she very neatly done her hair was always fixed so nicely and she's just the most attractive lady um do you know like 
was some of her past jobs before being the teachers? I think not. I, I didn't know her at that point in time. I just know that she had come up from Richland Center because even in the thing, there's a Richland Center and R.C. Hornet, a yearbook in there. And uh, so, no, I don't know what she did other than that. Um, do you have any sons or daughters? I have a son who lives here in La Crosse. He has two daughters who have gone through Longfellow. He himself went through Longfellow. My husband was a teacher here for over 20 years. He was uh, uh, industrial arts and, and uh, drafting, drawing, all those kinds of things. Now it's technology, uh, industrial technology that it would be. It's changed through the years. Computers do, did the change for everything. Um, you know. And my, excuse me, I didn't get to mention my daughter. My daughter lives in Tucson, Arizona, and uh, I get to go every year out there and spend some time, at least about six weeks every year. And I love the Southwest Desert. That's the Sonoran Desert with the big swarrows, and uh, it's it's a lovely place to be. Totally different than here. Do you know if she had any daughter or sons or daughters? She was not married, so she had never married. Mm -hmm. um, do you know how Catherine impacted the society? Well, she impacted it with her educational experiences. Uh, the YWCA honored her for her impact, and I have her little box that was given to her, a little memento box, and I want you to take a picture of that. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, um, she, did she play basketball for the YWCA? I think she did. They always said that she was tall, gangly, and uh, <laughs> well coordinated. So probably she did. But see, that was before I knew her. So I didn't know her as a young person. Do you know where she grew up? Right here in La Crosse was her. And she lived here on the south side, went to our Savior's Lutheran, which is down on 5th, 6th, and Division. And uh, so, she, yes, so she never ventured very far except to go down to uh, Richland Center and come back, and that's not that far away either. So, but she did travel the world. She traveled, and I have pictures of her, and I'll share those things because she was so uh, absolutely uh, gung-ho on North Skidalen and all the Norwegian things. So I'll share with you some of the little uh, Nisi, the little uh, Norwegian trolls and things that I brought along. Was it worthwhile for you to become a teacher? Oh, absolutely. I can't think of anything more rewarding than helping people achieve and uh, do it. And when I had kids raise their reading scores by the end of the year, by just leaps and bounds, I knew, hey, that was success, and I enjoyed it. And by the same token, drugs is a terrible thing. And I knew and I could smell those kids who had toked before school and one marijuana cigarette at seven o'clock in the morning denies them learning for the day. They just go backwards. So I knew the kids when I gave them reading tests and they went backwards what was happening and we of course turned them over for other people to work with because I'm not equipped for that kind of work. Do you have any stories about Catherine? No, I don't, uh, because I knew her in a professional way. And I know that she went to the ball games, the Catbird games. They had uh, <laughs> the season tickets. And Stuart tells about that. They always parked in the Radisson parking lot, eat in the Radisson, so that they'd be right next door to the uh, lacrosse center. And then they went to the ball games together. So. I know through other people that she loved the ball games. Well, she'd been a basketball player, as you said. <laughs> um, so how long have you lived in La Crosse? Since 1954. A long time. I'm an old lady. <laughs> um, what skills helped you get this far in life? Study hard. Work diligently. I um, give of myself to other people. If you'd see my 
calendar, you'd know that I go in many directions every day. There are two and three things that I do to give myself away. What do you think she was the best at in teaching? I didn't know her as a teacher, you understand. I knew her as the professional above us, who were the teachers. She was the uh, person directing us, so I didn't see her in her teaching days. What was the best part of her job? The best part of her job was to be a facilitator. She gave strong leadership. Uh, she coordinated well. I think uh, perhaps uh, those were things that she had developed through the years. Mm -hmm. You have to learn to work with people. And there are lots of opposing ideas. And when you sit around a table with a lot of strong people who, my idea is the right one, you have to be able to meld. And she was the one, as I said, a facilitator and a coordinator. Do you mm -hmm. think that she would ever want to like relive one part of her life? Oh, I'm sure she would have. Uh, just uh, traveling. I have pictures in here above the Arctic Circle. Well, hey, that's, that's outstanding to get over there in the mountains and, and uh, travel into Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and get up above the Arctic Circle and to do things like that. And then she took trips and, and I see her coming off of a, a ship. Mm -hmm. yeah. So she traveled a lot? Yes, she did in later years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where do you think her favorite place to travel? Oh, I suppose Norway. <laughs> that would be reliving the roots, you know, her, her heritage. So, so she was from Norway and? No, she, her family would have been from Norway okay. and she was from La Crosse. Um, if you had one thing to tell kids about like learning, what would it be? Take learning seriously. You only get one chance in life. And if you blow it now, it's gone. It's hard to stumble your way through. And just what's happened at Virgi Virginia Tech, for instance, somebody who was so out of touch with society uh, that he couldn't stand himself nor others. Uh, and to take the lives of others when he could have been helping himself and helping others. You see, we just don't understand what goes wrong with people that they can't find the joy of life. We only get one chance to go through life Seize the moment. Um, do you think it would be better to have a good education and a job like working at McDonald's or, or a bad education and a job at McDonald's? Oh, I want you to have a good education. That was my whole dedication in life. Uh, I wouldn't want anybody to have a bad education. Everybody should enjoy Every moment of every day, this is all you have. There is nothing else. When you're gone, you're gone. Do you know of some organizations that she has been in? That I'm involved with? Yeah. I belong to Retired uh, Teachers Club, and I have been the past president. I served as secretary for four years, president is two years. I'm now uh, working with the uh, Wisconsin uh, Foundation for Scholarships to promote teaching because I believe in teaching and so I'll do anything to help that. Um, I work with the Daughters of the American Revolution and we work with historic preservation and genealogy and uh, Americanism and that's why I'm appointed to uh, work up at Toma Veterans Hospital and I go up there work with the veterans. Was she in any of the organizations you were in? Or? Yeah, she was a retired uh, educator with us, yeah, with me, mm -hmm. yes. Um, what age most affected your life? Oh, 
what age? Let's see. <laughs> That's a hard one to sing because I've had success all the way through. And uh, when I was in, in high school, I belonged to everything. I played in the orchestra and the band and sang in the chorus. And, and I, because I lived at home, I could work in the church choir and direct that. I was a student conductor for the band from a sophomore, junior, and senior year. Um, when going to college on a violin scholarship. I did all the kinds of things that I loved to do, and my folks were so wonderful to see that I got to do them. You know, they paved the way, and that's what parents, loving parents, do for kids. They'll just go out of their way. My dad just popped his buttons anytime I stood up to play a violin solo, because I could read notes, and see, he played by ear. He couldn't read the notes. <laughs> He listened, he had an ear. What motivated Catherine? I would say her love of life motivated her. She wanted everyone around her to succeed. She was, uh, I think, my word of facilitator, that's an adjective that I think, and she just facilitated things. She made things happen. Do you know any organizations that Catherine's been in? Uh, some of your other people, uh, you will probably be interviewing others, will you, about her? And they probably could tell you more about Norris Cadalan and all those kinds of things that she did. Because uh -huh. I didn't go to church with her and, uh, you know, I only saw her as an educator, mainly. Mm -hmm. Do you have any more to tell about Catherine, like, like general information? I don't think I do. I know she was proud to be Norwegian. <laughs> she was a world traveler, a lifelong learner. She enabled others to see that love of education. She, she just glowed with happiness. She was joyful to be around, a pleasure. Like, did Catherine have any enemies? <laughs> Not that I know of. <laughs> Not that I know of. Um, what um, organization do you think impacted society the most? Well, our public school systems impact. They educate the masses. And I think uh, knowledge is the key to the world. And uh, so I'm proud to have been a public school teacher because I think without education, hey, what is there? If it's only for the upper crust and those who can afford it, then the masses become the slaves and they're caught in the trenches of working for somebody else and they never can use their God-given talents. But in public education, we are to help the least of them succeed to the degree that they can succeed. Not everybody's given the same amount of, of, not, of uh, brain matter to work with. Some have talents one direction, and not everybody's a book learner. And my husband was so proud to have worked in, in vocational trade kinds of things because he said some of those kids would never succeed but they could do wonderful things with the manipulative skills and they become the engineers and the other kinds of people that do things and without our craft people, where are we? So we need all that. What was the most frustrating part of your job? I didn't have too many frustrations as far as myself. I saw the frustration that um, drugs caused. I saw the frustration that lack of money causes because there are some kids who came to school uh, without proper shoes and overshoes in the wintertime, boots, heavy clothes. And I can remember when the Hmong kids first came in 1980, one of my 
boys, because I had the Hmong kids to teach them English, the very basics of everything. They didn't know how to do anything, you see, to speak our language. The uh, fact that this one boy said he was so cold he'd come and he'd sit in class and he'd all be all shivery, and I said, don't you have enough blanket and warmth at night? No, he said, I'm always cold. They put all their coats on me, coats, coats. So I washed a, an older blanket that I had, an extra one, took it to school the next morning, and I called him in so nobody else knew it. <laughs> By noon, I had other kids come. I'm cold, I'm cold. <laughs> So I knew the word had passed. <laughs> they knew what he had in his locker. But it, it was a rewarding experience to work with kids who didn't have any facility for English. We'd count the lockers, we'd count steps, we'd count and do all kinds of things to give them a background. Mm -hmm. It was fun. What do you think is the most satisfying? The, the satisfying part is to teach reading kids where you see their success. And they have to learn to be able to write it out. It can't just be printed. They say we need to be able to write. And some kids can never get past the printing stage to get to the cursive. And, you know, there are lots of things in there that uh, we're dealing with on a human scale. Um, did you play sports like you did? Oh, sure. I was what we called Yawaka, YWCA, and I, I always played volleyball. But see, I had to protect my hands if I was a violinist because one time I caught a baseball and hit there and, and my finger and I was ready for a recital. Well, you know you can't play the violin with your finger on a, a stick up there holding it up, you know. So I was warned not to do some of those things. But uh, yes, I did play sports, and my husband and I were badminton champions uh, for tournaments. Mm -hmm. we, we were a good team. Who do you think inspired you? I know who inspired me. My parents didn't have the chance for an education like I did. They were from North Dakota, and they only had up to eighth grade then you, uh, because they lived in the country. Then they had to go into town and stay with other families to go to high school. And so they never had a chance to go on for further higher education. And that was what they set as their goal for their kids. You will study, you will succeed. Um, do you feel that there's any problems in the community? Oh, you just look around. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> we know there are problems in the communities. Yeah, we know there are. But that's life. Life has stumbling blocks all the time. And it's how do we deal with them? We have so many more people nowadays. We used to have empty lots and places for kids to play. We don't have those anymore like that. Mm -hmm. Our kids on our block play out in the street. Lots of times we have no sidewalks, and uh, so they can't even play on the sidewalk. So mm -hmm, they have to go to a park or play in the street. Um, so do you think there's any, how do you, do you think um, there's anything people should learn about Catherine? The thing to take away from Catherine would be her dedication to education that she believes so strongly in a public school education. And that was her aim in life, was to build strength. Because we all need that as our background. So no matter what we choose to do as a vocation, you have to have the background and the basics. Um, do you feel there's anything that um, kids can do to get the problems of the community worked out? It takes everybody to work together, that's for sure. And uh, they're inheriting a lot of problems, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. They keep talking about the drunken drivers 
and those who have fallen into the river and how to put up a barricade there. Is that the answer? No. Uh, we know that you have to, each one, know that you have to conduct yourself in a safe way and see that others around you are likewise safe. So you can't be the stumbling block to somebody else to pull them down. You have to help. It all begins with us, each one of us. They always say when you point a finger at somebody else, you've got how many fingers pointing back at you? So three fingers pointing back at you, and you're responsible to help somebody else. Um, so if you could have lived anywhere else besides the cross, what do you think you would have lived? I grew up in a river town, Dubuque, Iowa, on the Mississippi. My husband was from Prairie du Chien. He likewise uh, fished and hunted and worked around the, uh, the river. And we had owned a cottage over by Brownsville on the Mississippi River, and the eagles would soar around one time during the migration. We counted 18 eagles up there. And then he said, we, in our retirement, will go up to our uh, cottage. We uh, have neighbors on Fish Lake up by Spooner. The cry of the loons, the atmosphere up there in that northern lakes, that was wonderful. So at the time that he, we retired, he'd already had lumber uh, sent out to our cottage and we he was going to be building but then you see he had cancer and uh, that ended all of his dreams and I sold the cottage and uh, the boat and the works and then ended our trips up north but that was our dream home we were going to live up there. Is there any more questions that you do have? No. Well, I want to thank you. You've had very good questions to ask me. You've given me some in-depth things to think about. So, thank you.